What's up guys? It's your boy David Matlock coming at you with Tar Takes Summer Chronicles. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna hop right into it and we're gonna talk about uh, five teams that got better this offseason and five teams that got worse or didn't make the moves that I think they should have made. Um, first team we're going to go with, uh, just a little unknown player named LeBron James who hasn't really been covered that much this summer by the media on my timeline uh, all day. Uh, yeah, he signed with the Lakers, so uh, I don't know how much credit I'm going to give the Lakers front office for this. But uh, it's still a win for them either way. They're going to make the playoffs this year, obviously. So I mean, if LeBron can stay healthy. Um, but, yeah, so I don't know if LeBron wants to win rings now or make movies. Because, you know, we're hearing about Space Jam 2. Along with him making Space Jam 2, we are getting the real-life Toon Squad, or as I like to call them, the meme team. Because we are getting all the real-life NBA memes in Rajon Rondo, JaVale McGee, and the best of all, Lance Stevenson. Lance Stevenson, of course, having that historic little rivalry with LeBron in the playoffs, getting so many gifts from that. Uh, JaVale McGee, a multiple Shaq and a full winner. Uh, and Rondo, who literally posed in a picture with a girl that had a shirt that said, fuck LeBron James. So, yeah. I mean, all right, so Rob Polina and Magic Johnson, I watched an interview, they were talking about this. And uh, they're saying if you try and beat the Warriors at their own game, you're not gonna you're not gonna succeed. I mean, the Rockets didn't even really play the Warriors game. They played ISO ball. And they got pretty damn close, except for Chris Paul getting hurt, which is pretty unlucky. But um, uh, yeah. So I'm seeing a bunch of playmakers on the floor. What I'm seeing with a bunch of playmakers are guys that can get shooters the ball. Uh, and uh, Lonzo Ball, Rajon Rondo, Lance Stevenson, LeBron James. These are all guys that can find the open shooters, uh, not Lance and Lonzo not necessarily being the best scorers, either is Rondo. Lonzo, his scoring chops are getting better, um, but still not not going to be knocked down shooters. But what I'm seeing here is the whole Rondo dynamic. Everyone's like, so is Lonzo going to get traded? Uh, what I think here is, honestly, this is a smart move by the Lakers. If you want to find a point guard to come and tutor Alonzo to be a little bit more aggressive and get a little bit of attitude about him, Rajon Rondo is one of the best people to get for this. Not necessarily a scoring mentality, but to have that little bit of grit uh, with them. Uh, I think Rondo and Lonzo kind of have very, very similar games. Um, they're going to be competing for the starting job, but watching uh, the video for Rondo after he signed, he seemed very, very excited to, I guess, mentor Lonzo and he said that he was ready to be kind of in that veteran role. And then JaVale is going to obviously protect him the paint. You're going to need him in small doses, though. Him and Lance, you're going to need in small doses, or else you're going to OD on that shit real fast, and it's going to be very ugly. Um, but, yeah, so with the memes, meme team or the Toon Squad in L.A., we get fucking Boogie and the Monstars and Golden State. So, yeah, uh, anyone who wants to call us a weaker move than KD, I'm sorry, this isn't. Uh, Boogie didn't have any offers. Uh, if you didn't have any offers lined up before free agency started, you're, you're, you need to start panicking because people are obviously going to be contacting you before then. Um, so, Boogie basically didn't have any offers, and the Warriors were the only ones to come knocking on the door. This isn't a knock on the Warriors. This is a knock on every other GM in the NBA for not making an attempt to get Boogie Cousins. I mean, yeah, Boogie had a bad injury, but this is Boogie Cousins, a top three center in the league. Like, what are you doing? I mean, come on. You got to pick it up. That This is... So, Boogie basically gets a chance to rest that serious injury with no pressure to come back at all. He gets a chance to prove he's worthy of a max contract, and then he gets a ring in the process. So, I don't really see, like, anyone who's going to complain about this, I have no sympathy for you. This is Boogie doing Boogie. And, I mean, he's only getting five mil, so, I mean, he's sacrificing for this move. But it's, this is the only move he can make. Uh, next team, the Indiana Pacers, with their biggest free agent signing of the summer being Tyreek Evans, who had a resurgent year after, uh, obviously, that Rookie of the Year campaign versus Steph Curry. Had injuries that have plagued him for so long. And then Curry, we all know where Curry's at right now. So Tyreek Evans hasn't exactly followed up to it, but last year we saw Tyreek Evans looked very good. So I'm seeing a guy who's going to add a lot of firepower off the bench. He's going to be a potential six-man-of-the-year guy. Uh, 
He had averaged about 20 this past year. He's not going to start because they have Victor Oladipo, and then I don't really see any reason to put him at the three. I mean, they might. I don't, they have Thad Young and Demar Sabonis and Miles Turner, so I don't really see any reason to mess up that front court in the starting lineup. But he's going to come off the bench, and then you get Kylo Quinn, the energy guy off the bench who can rebound for you. And then you get Dougie McD, uh, who's going to be spacing the floor. Doug McDermott is a good floor spacer. I mean, he's not going to do much, but NBA needs shooters, and the Pacers weren't necessarily a spectacular three-point shooting team. Not a bad one, but it doesn't hurt to have guys that can knock down a couple threes for you. All right, and then uh, probably the most shocking move of the summer, the OKC Thunder managed to keep Paul George. How? I mean, all right, so we're hearing everyone. I think the pressure weighed on Paul George, I think, here hearing how the supporting cast for LeBron gets blamed. I don't know how big about that one, but I'm thinking, like, Paul George isn't, like, that guy. Like, anytime he's put in that situation to be that guy, like, we look at back at the Indiana Pacers, he was that guy scoring-wise, but I think that was more like Roy Hibbert's team. That was when Roy Hibbert was, like, actually good and Frank Vogel. That was a defense-oriented team, and he still wasn't clutch at all. I mean, we saw the Jazz knocked him out, and he had, like, one field goal, and now the last no, he had the last field goal he scored was in like the second quarter, it was in the first half. So, but yeah, so the Thunder get Hamadou Diallo, high, high value pick here, high value pick, uh, that they get from the Brooklyn Nets. This guy was heralded as one of the most athletic players in the draft, period. And they end up with this guy, um, Kentucky guard, he was projected to go first round, top 20, even. And they somehow land him at the 40th pick. And then the Thunder also had Nerlens Noel. And he is going to make that defense in OKC even more stout than it already was with Paul George, with Steven Adams, with a healthy Andre Roberson. And now you get Nerlens Noel. You're not going to get jack shit in the paint with the, versus these guys. But, I mean, they're not going to be good floor spacers. But still, nice little pieces for PG and Russell Westbrook to play with. And they're not going to have Carmelo Anthony anymore. So that's a defensive liability out the door. All right. Next team, Dallas Mavericks. They had DeAndre Jordan. Uh, I thought that they were actually going to go for Boogie. Uh, but then they landed DeAndre Jordan uh, to a one-year $24 million deal, I think. Yeah, it was a one-year $24 million deal. And uh, he, they re-signed mm -hmm. Dirk. I mean, has no surprise there. But then they traded up for Luka Doncic. Uh, he's going to compliment Dennis Smith very well. Uh, that backcourt is going to be one of the backcourts we need to be watching for a while. Uh, Luka Doncic is more of a passer, more of a playmaker than Dennis Smith is. Dennis Smith is more downhill scorer, more of a highlight reel type of guy, not necessarily a facilitating point guard. That's more of what Luka Doncic is going to be bringing to the table. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to be very good. They're going to be a playoff contender this year. Uh, they've got Harrison Barnes, and they're going to have Wesley Matthews coming off the bench. Uh, they got some pieces to make a little bit of a, a playoff run. All right, so moving on to the five teams that I think got worse or just didn't make any moves that they should have made. Um, number one, I'm going to go with the Raptors. Uh, they fired Dwayne Casey, coach of the year. He got you 59 wins. I mean, he lost to LeBron. I mean, come on. I mean, they, they could have done better against Washington, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so Dwayne Casey's now at the Pistons. They recent reports actually had them potentially getting Kawhi. Now, if Kawhi goes to Toronto, that is going to be very interesting to see how that works out. Uh, definitely going to keep them in the playoff conversation. That even after that, GM said they were going to blow everything up. But uh, I don't really see any any improvement out of this team. They're going to definitely get worse. Um, yeah, next team, the Houston Rockets. So the Houston Rockets, this is the definition of don't ruin a, don't ruin a good thing. If it ain't broke, you don't have to fix it. And it was not broke, and they broke it themselves. They didn't take care of it. Trevor Ariza goes to the Suns. You're letting Trevor Ariza go? Trevor Ariza's been there for a long time. Trevor Ariza was there when James Harden was just starting to come out. Like, he was a glue guy. He played decent defense against Kevin Durant. I mean, he's one of those solid guys that you need. Like, those 3 and D wings. And then they lose Luka Balamute, a very, very efficient score, uh, defensive player. Not scorer, I'm sorry. 
Um, yeah, he goes back to the Clippers. Uh, so, I don't really know what they're trying to do here. They're trying to get Carmelo? Why? Why are you trying to get, why are you trying to get Carmelo? I mean, you're going to go more ISO ball? You want him to get mad at D'Antoni again? Or are you going to bring back Jeremy Lin so he gets mad at D'Antoni so we can start this cycle all over again? I don't know what they're doing here. And then Capella's asking for uh, four years, $100 million. So that's a little interesting how that's going to pan out. And then Chris Paul taking a max contract along with what James Harden got in a monster contract. And then Capella asking for $100 million. They're not really going to have much cap flexibility. But they re-signed Joe Green, so they're going to the finals this year. <laughs> Next team, we've got the Cavaliers. Obviously getting worse because they lose LeBron. I mean, I don't, I don't need any more points to argue for that one. Ugh, they lose Jeff Green. I mean, Jeff Green's not like a massive score for them, but he's like one of those guys who will drop 40 one night and then drop four the next night. But still, he's a good guy to have off the bench, a uh, nice energy guy to have, um, and they lost him to the Wizards. And then we're hearing potential Kevin Love trades? Question mark? Um... I wouldn't move him if I were them. He's their only all-star on that roster still. But they did drive Colin Sexton, so I give them kind of a thumbs up. I, mean, uh, I don't know. They could. I'm hearing they could have traded it up for Luka Doncic. Uh, but Colin Sexton's a good pick. Colin Sexton's been balling out. Um, I guess this is going to be a cycle. LeBron's going to go back to Cleveland in like four years after his contract's up. He's going to leave again, and they're going to draft another point guard. They're probably going to draft like... LeBron's son, honestly, as point guard there. But we'll see. Um, the Magic. The Orlando Magic is just allergic to guards for some reason. I mean, in this draft, there were so many. There were so many guards that could have gone for it. Like, literally, they were Shy Gilgis Alexander, Colin Sexton, Trey Young were still on the board during this draft. And they go for Mo Bamba. I mean, Mo Bamba, he's very talented. I mean, they're obviously building a strong front court in Orlando with Aaron Gordon re-signing, Jonathan Isaac, and Mo Bamba there. That's a, that's a pretty strong front court to have. Uh, very strong potential. But Isaiah Briscoe, that's your guard? I think Shelvin Max still on the team? Who's, who is going to dribble the ball? Who is going to pass you the ball when you are trying to post up? Because Mo Bamba's not going to dribble the ball. I know that for sure. He's not going to be feeding Aaron Gordon in the post. Who do they have? They don't even have Alfred Payton anymore. They, and they lose Hazonia. Hazonia was having a good year. He was actually a decent guy who could shoot. Very good shooter. He's going to do well in New York. Uh, he can pass the ball. At least pass the ball. Uh, and they lose that guy. So I don't really see what... The, Mag the Magic's obviously building a front court, but they could have done so much, so much with those guards. Um, and they didn't even get Isaiah Thomas. So we were hearing rumors that they were going to get Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas signed with the Denver Nuggets today on a veteran minimum, I think. Um, so, yeah, the Nuggets are going to be a team to watch for as a playoff dark horse. Uh, but, yeah, so the Magic dropping the fucking ball on that one. Um... The Wizards didn't draft a big man. All right, all right, so John Wall, your star player, is like, guys, we need an athletic big man. I want to see. Obviously, there are some shots going at Marching Gortat for that. Um, uh, and you, you've got you've got good 3 and D guys. You've got Kelly Oubre. You've got Otto Porter. You've got good guard in, in Bradley Beal and John Wall. You've got you've got all those pieces. You just need a big man. We're going to draft another 3 and D wing in Troy Brown. Why? Why? Robert Williams, Amari Spellman, Mitchell Robinson were still on the board. Mitchell Robinson, who's been showing out. They're, he's going to be a part of the most promising front court in the NBA with Chris Hasporzingis, Kevin Knox, Mitchell Robinson. That's going to be a crazy front court. And the Wizards didn't even try and get any of those guys. I mean, so they, they move on from Gortat, which I think was a good move. And then you go for another washed-up Magic Center in Dwight Howard. I don't. I'm not seeing. They're falling for another trap. I mean, Dwight Howard's gonna go rebound free. He's gonna play some defense, but he's not. He's not a modern big. He's not. He's he's a relic. 
He's, and he's not really going to be like a veteran guy who's going to add value to because he's a locker room cancer. So I, and this is already a team that has chemistry issues. So I don't understand why they're making this move. But we'll see. So, yeah, this has been an uh, episode of Tar Takes. I've got more content coming. I'm sorry. I've been lagging behind. I've had work. Um, but, yeah, we're, I'm going to be putting out some Summer League videos. Trey Young dropping some dubs for my Hawks. Um, yeah, we're going to be talking about some, for all my Carolina Heels fans out there, we're going to be talking about Carolina players in the Summer League and potential uh, outlook for this upcoming basketball season. So, yeah, stay tuned. Um, check out Relevant at R E L E V N T. Relevant on Twitter. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, check them out. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch y'all later.